Recently I was flying over an area that I have crossed hundreds of times. It was very familiar, I thought. Except this time I had a camera mounted outside of the airplane on the tail. I was practicing steep bank circling maneuvers, hence the angles in the video. When I got home, I noticed the uh, black areas around this feature called Upsal Hogback. In previous flights, I was looking out through the uh, plexiglass windows and doing photography. But an outside camera really picked up the uh, details in the resolution without the distortion of uh, windows and glare. I was vaguely aware that Upsal Hogback was a volcanic feature, but until I saw the uh, lava deposits all around it, I just never thought about it that much. And when you're doing steep turns, trying to maintain altitude and coordinated flight, you're not really looking at the ground. <laughs> So when I got home, I decided to do a little more research on this volcanic system in this area. It's, this volcano is also related to two other volcanoes in that area. So we'll go to a map to get some orientation to this area. The area of this video is in northwest Nevada, near the city of Fallon. Upsal Hogback is 10 miles north of Fallon, right next to Highway 95. Nine miles southwest of the Upsal Hogback volcano is the Soda Lake volcano. 11 miles southeast of Upsal Hogback Volcano is the Rattlesnake Hill Volcano. Upsal Hogback erupted about 11,000 to 15,000 years ago during the late Pleistocene epoch. Rattlesnake Hill erupted around a million years ago during the Middle Pleistocene epoch. Soda Lake Volcano erupted around 1,500 years ago during the Holocene epoch, so it is very young and is considered an active volcano in terms of threat by the U.S. Geological Survey. making a flat pass from south to north over the volcanic complex. We're now looking at the smaller volcanoes on the south end. To the left is the Kenna Metal plant the, where they produce tungsten. We're now coming up on the big crater. I'm going to bank over a little bit here to try to get it more centered in the picture. The whole feature is three miles long and the main crater is one mile in diameter.
turning around 180 degrees, will make a pass from the north to the south. The Upsal Hogback volcano erupted about 11,000 years ago during the late Pleistocene epoch. At that time, it erupted in Pleistocene Lake Lahontan, forming a island out of the tough cone. Because of the water, it was an explosive eruption, and there's still evidence of that ejecta laying around. The rim is currently 180 feet or 55 meters above the valley floor. Recent researchers say that it has eroded down to where it is now only about one-third of its original height, which would have made it 540 feet high when it was new. In geologic time, 11,000 years ago is nothing. It's 11 seconds. And this is still very much an active volcanic zone. This volcano, the Soda Lake Volcano and the Rattlesnake Hill Volcano are all related. They are in the Walker Lane Fault Zone, which is a very thin spot in the earth. Indeed, this is a very hot spot. Measurements have been taken around here showing a, quite an elevation in temperature. And just a few miles ahead is a geothermal plant that takes advantage of the uh, energy coming out of the ground to produce electricity. Let's get down on the ground so we can take a look at the area from the ground. A drone shot showing the Upsal hogback in profile several miles away. To the right down there is the infamous California Immigrant Trail on the Carson River route. Pioneers at the time described Upsal Hogback as a sand dune. Geologist Roger Morrison in the 1940s started describing it as a volcano. At the southern end of the volcanic field is a collapsed block in the distance. Closer up, fractured volcanic tuff layers. Tuff is a porous volcanic rock. Interesting glassy occlusion in the tough. Close up, you can see the flow banded rhyolite or glassy 
material called obsidian. monitoring station that uploads data on movements and temperatures. Upsal hogback is not quite extinct, I guess. <laughs> panning with a drone from a couple hundred feet. The features are quite indistinct and subtle, having been erased by 10,000 years of waves and blowing sands. The casual ATV traveler would have no idea of what they're crossing. This violent eruption was witnessed by Paleo-Indians standing on the far shores. Down there on the left is the area of the last clip where we were looking at the obsidian. Rattlesnake Hill in the distance. We're coming up on Soda Lake Volcano, Nevada's only active volcano. It is listed on the active volcano category according to the U.S. Geological Survey Volcano Hazards Program. An active volcano is any volcano that is less than 10,000 years old. Soda Lake is very young in that it erupted about 1,500 years ago. Soda Lake is about one mile in diameter. It looks like we're getting a, some turbulence here because of the temperature differences between the water and the surrounding land. A view from the rear camera kind of gives you a World War II tail gunner's view of the world. From the rim road down to the water, it's 118 feet. Soda Lake is a tough ring mar volcano. It blew up after Pleistocene Lake Lahontan receded. Its energy multiplier was groundwater, which caused a very explosive steam explosion. This volcano is so young that it must have been witnessed by Indians living there at the time. Coming back to Mother Earth, I'm going to land a little higher and longer than normal so I can get a better picture of the runway from the forward camera. Normally I would land on the numbers. Doing a 180 degree pan from the rim road of Soda Lake Volcano. Rattlesnake Hill Volcano over there seven miles away.
Upsil Hogback Volcano over there nine miles away. Right there. The area here is covered with ash and lapelli tephra. Lapelli is tephra that is in the size of small stone. The force of volcanic explosions is sometimes compared to nuclear explosions. A quarter mile crater for an underground nuclear shot at the Nevada test site required 104 kilotons. This one mile crater would take 400 kilotons. That would be 26 Hiroshima size 15 kiloton bombs to do this. Mother Nature at work. <laughs> Rattlesnake Hill is the oldest of our volcanic trio at one million years old. Pleistocene tufa deposits go right to the top, so it was covered with water at one time. On the north side are Lake Lahontan deposits. Now it is a convenient landmark for pilots coming and going. For those who want to geek out on geology, here are three good references. First, Roger Morrison did the most extensive research on Pleistocene Lake Lahontan in the 1940s and 50s. He did much of his work on horseback. Second, Erica Anderson's work, which takes advantage of modern technology for dating and sequencing. Third, Justin Pentesco's work that focuses on microbial fossils. One of the aims of this research is to establish a research base that can be applied to similar microbial life found on other planets like Mars. This obscure place is important enough to cause two of, of these researchers, Anderson and Pentesco, to come down all the way from Ontario, Canada. 